Welcome. I'm Lars Sage, Gallery Manager of the Art Center of Estes Park. And this is the, going to be the third of, of the series of interviews that we've been doing with our member artists and the special focus on abstract art. And today I want to welcome and introduce you to Astrid Paulstein. Welcome, Astrid. Thank you, Lars. Uh, Astrid, uh, first of all, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. I'm, um, I was born in Germany a long time ago. Uh, and I've always painted since I was a little girl, um, but then I had to grow up like everybody else. And uh, uh, I was a nurse for 36 years, uh, raised a family with my husband. Uh, we had some great, uh, two great sons. And um, uh, after 36 years of nursing, I retired and I'm finally uh, dedicating all my time to creating art. In other words, uh Having family life and so forth kind of yeah. put that on hold for kids, you. Kids, mortgage, you know, uh -huh, that yeah. all takes quite a bit of time, especially, I mean, I do love my kids. It was a, <laughs> a, a, one of my favorite projects ever, you know, to, to raise them, but, and you have to pay good attention to that. Yeah, yeah that helps a little bit too, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> are they interested in painting? Uh, they are. One graduated from art school, uh, but he mostly works with computers now. And uh, our youngest son, he does was still work, does a lot of artwork too. Um, unfortunately, he's colorblind, and uh, but he does beautiful uh, things in wood and uh, metal and um, uh, beautiful projects. So it sounds like they inherited some of the artistic genes from mom. They, huh? I think they did, <laughs> and they are my best critics and my most encouraging supporters. Um, oh, great. Supporters, yes. Oh, how nice. Oh. So, uh, what, what, since we are focusing on abstract art, uh, what, what draws you to abstraction? Uh, I do after painting the landscape and uh, uh, more realistic uh, subjects for a long time. Um, I'm at the moment. I'm really enjoying the playfulness, the innovation, and the uh, uh, creativity in um, playing with uh, abstract art. Now, what is the difference? Um, I mean, as far as how how would you um, define abstract art? Um, well, it's it's a little bit less representational it is um, I think limiting uh, not limiting but stretching the medium to express a little bit more than strictly what you see so it's it's a, it's a step farther from impressionistic or expressionistic it's um, it's sometimes letting the medium take over and and uh, an abstract artist friend of mine calls it the conversation with the unknown Mm -hmm. You are creating something, and there's a certain dialogue love between you and the painting. The painting, the progress of the painting, will tell you what to do next. As long as you listen, right? As long as you pay attention. <laughs> I noticed in, in your art, you kind of combine a little bit of a, I, I, I don't want to say a, a realistic, but um, yes, yes, um, I do. I do like the realistic the aspect yeah. in yeah. abstract. I'm not quite there yet to do the. A complete abstract. Um, I, I still like a reference to landscape. I I'm, I'm absolutely love the abstract lands, landscapes. Um, Irma Cerise is a painter I greatly admire. She does very abstract landscapes and um, I just to me is somebody who does good abstract landscape creates a place I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is kind of what I'm trying to create with a lot of the more landscape leaning abstractions. I, I want to create a place that draws you in that, that you want to be walking in. So what about something like this? And that is a little bit more, it's a brooding sky, it's a, a, a brewing storm. It's um, maybe that's a little bit more something I wanted to express, but I also want to draw you in with these beautiful colors. Um, because there is a lot of beauty in storms and mm -hmm. in nature, and nature is not always friendly, but it's always beautiful. <laughs> and that's your version of it, isn't that it? That is my version of it. Now, do you start off with an idea and then that leads to this, or, or is I it, you just I often start out with an idea. My Aspens are, I often start out with an idea, uh, but with the more um, textured acrylics, these are ideas that happen after the texture is applied. Um, I do love to, to put these different stages of paintings, and usually I work on, on several acrylics at one time, and also some oil paintings. So, uh, do you start off with an idea that uh, 
develops your, your artwork or how yeah. do you do it? The landscapes usually start out with an idea that's inspired by a landscape, like a photograph or um, um, a drawing. Um, the textured paintings often start with the initial application of texture um, and sometimes second, third layer in, I know what direction I want to go. Um, so, uh, yeah, you often find a realistic aspect in the paintings, and um, so I also sometimes like to conversely start with an abstract, like these guys are started with a very abstract, almost Jackson Pollock kind of drop background, and create something more realistic out of, out of it. Yeah, you seem like you like to combine kind of realistic and abstract. I do like to, to play with that a lot, the, yeah, the, the back and forth of what is real, what is not. So is it that you find your inspiration from all kinds of things, or is there particular areas that really impact you when you get inspiration? Uh -huh. light, light and color and um, are, are my, my biggest uh, influence, and uh, sometimes small objects, uh, but yeah, mostly color. I'm, I'm very drawn to color. You know, you do have different, you know, very colorful pieces here. Right, yeah. Uh, even if the darker ones still have, you know, some some nice color to it that speaks yeah, well, right. too. Um, what is your favorite medium to, to do all this? Uh, oil is still my favorite for landscapes. Um, it, it does the most beautiful um, job at, at blending uh, colors. Uh, you have more time. Uh, acrylic dries very fast, so it's, it's, it's difficult for me at this point still to, to come up with those nice colors. Luminous landscapes are still oil. Uh, acrylics are my favorite to, uh, with texture, to apply texture and to different uh, glazing, like that one, there's a lot of glazing in that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it also dries very fast. So sometimes if you're trying to create something where you have a weak deadline, it's, it's uh, easier to do an acrylic than an oil painting that takes longer to dry. Is there, you know, do you have a particular process on how you start or, or develop your, your work? Usually I do start um, with an idea. Or, well, I guess if it's over, often there is an idea, but sometimes the idea is just, a, oh, I want to play with this texture. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, then uh, you start with either the idea of, of, of a more realistic painting or, or of a textured painting. And I often have several paintings going at the same time. Um, so when I can't think of anything, I just have to look around <laughs> Around me, there's something that has to be finished. Yeah, it's an ongoing process. It is an ongoing until process. Until it tells you it's finished. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you're finished with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, sometimes you have to put them away. And sometimes they have to go in the trash bin. Yeah, because there's just no more room in the studio. <laughs> you have to make some choices then. You do have to make choices, yes. And um, I. I think with in an interview and the other two artists, you know, I've noticed that it is that kind of process that you you could start off with something and then suddenly it doesn't want to go any further until later on you have to, right. you know, yeah. it'll, it'll speak to you or bring it, bring right. its attention back to yeah. your, your But viewpoint. sometimes the beauty is sometimes those moments of frustration also give you new ideas. I, I do remember when I started acrylics a couple of years ago, I, I bought myself that big acrylic book and I actually started with gold leafing. Um, a book on that, that taught you how to do gold leafing, and I did a bunch of gold leafing uh, for backgrounds uh, for my oil paintings. Um, but about three or four pages into the book, I got really bored with with the projects in the book, and I suddenly just came up with my own out of frustration. Uh -huh. uh, you know, this like this technique was not in the book. It just kind of happened after four chapter four chapters in. <laughs> <laughs> you decided it was time to write your own book. In a yes. Sense. <laughs> <laughs> Where else can we see your art? Well, the, the, all, it's always at the our beautiful gallery. We switch out exhibits every six weeks, and I'm also currently showing at the Great Frame Up in Longmont with uh, Ray Ford and his students. And he's a still life painter, and there's some beautiful art there. And um, I also am a member of the Noble Art District in Boulder, and we have frequent exhibits and First Friday Art Walks, uh, which unfortunately right now are virtual uh, on websites and yeah, with small videos. And of course, my website, astridpaustian.com. 
Well, thank you, Astrid. Uh, thank you, Lois. We appreciate your being here and, and uh, putting up with my interview here. But, uh, but I hope that, you know, with the your own aspect of what I, after guard as it combines with the other ones we've interviewed, I think it gives us all a different perspective of, yes. of how each artist views that type of uh, medium or artwork, uh, as we might say. So um, we are, we'd like to invite you as the public to come and in, in, in view uh, Astrid's work, as well as all your other art center members, and especially come to see our featured show, Jewel Tones and Gemstones by Diana, Diana Wade and Alice League. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon again. Thank you.